Hi, person watching this video. There's been a lot of discussion lately about video game addiction. The World Health Organization has gone as far as to include it in the International Classification of Diseases. I think there's something really interesting happening here that I'd like to explore. And I'm not sure that demonizing video games and cutting them out of our lives entirely is necessarily conducive to a solution. Today, I'll be making the case for why I believe video games are so compelling to us, why they have these addictive properties, and why they might ultimately be valuable to us in small doses. probably heard of this before. Flow states are a particular kind of mental state coined by this guy. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this one. Flow states are often described as feeling in the zone, where you experience full, profound immersion in the activity you're performing. The flow state is also universal. People from different cultures, socioeconomic groups, genders, languages, and ages all describe flow states in the exact same way. And this is important because universal cognitive mechanisms like this tend to reveal fundamental things about how the mind works. Flow is also deeply tied with a sense of meaning in life. The more often we're able to enter these flow states, the more likely we are to sense that our lives have meaning. And flow also expresses qualities of what people call mystical experiences that can be achieved through certain compounds as well as deep meditative states. And these qualities include a loss of the sense of self, coupled with a feeling of unity and interconnectedness. When you're in the flow state, you feel like you're deeply at one with things, and with this comes a certain spontaneity. When an MMA fighter is anticipating a blow and dodges it, he's not thinking to himself, okay, so he's punching me here at this angle, so I should move my head here to dodge it. None of these thoughts happen explicitly. Instead, the fighter anticipates the blow, and his head is there, and he dodges it. So what's the takeaway here? Not only do people describe these flow experiences as profoundly satisfying and pleasant, but on top of that, we also tend to do our best cognitive work in these states. So how do we enter these flow states? A flow state must involve a balance between the challenge of the activity and the skill level of the agent engaging in the activity. Too much skill and not enough challenge just makes you bored, but too much challenge and not enough skill makes you anxious. So we need this balance of skill and challenge, but what else do we need? There are three additional necessary conditions for flow. Clear information. If it's not obvious what to do, you cannot enter flow. Tightly coupled feedback. If you're not receiving feedback telling you if what you're doing is right or wrong, you cannot enter flow. And error matters. If there's no consequences for mistakes, then you cannot enter flow. Video games perfectly capture this pattern. Video games are literally designed to balance the challenge with the skill level of the player. In ranked games like League of Legends, CSGO, and Overwatch, people are placed in a rank such that they tend to play with people of similar skill levels. There are often, you know, many problems with these ranking systems like ELO Hell and that sort of thing, but ultimately they are designed precisely for this purpose. And on the other hand, in single-player games, the difficulty curve tends to increase as you accumulate higher stats or gear, which achieves the same purpose of balancing the challenge with the skill. In terms of clear information, the objective of the game is often abundantly clear and easy to understand, even as a new player. In League, you destroy the enemy nexus before they destroy yours. In Overwatch, you push the payload towards its destination. In CSGO, you're trying to either plant or defuse the bomb. Tightly coupled feedback. Video games make it extremely obvious when you're performing well and when you're not performing well. When you are performing well, you're inundated with tooltips, pop-ups, and sound effects which communicate positive performance. And error matters. Mistakes have obvious and easy to understand consequences. You die, and you have to wait until you respawn before you can play again. So these flow state experiences are intrinsically satisfying for us, and we love being in them, and video games are very good at inducing them in us. But why? Yeah. 
Here, I'd like to describe one of our fundamental evolutionary mechanisms to help illustrate how and why we gravitate towards these flow states that video games afford us. Humans are able to throw things far faster and far more accurately than any other animal. And this makes sense. Imagine being an early hunter-gatherer human. You're walking awkwardly upright. You're exposing all your vulnerable spots like your neck and your vital organs. Your teeth aren't very sharp and your claws or nails aren't very sharp. Every animal can see you from far away because you're standing upright. This seems like a pretty bad setup. However, when we cooperate together and learn to fashion lightweight projectiles and throw them, we have the capacity to kill every other animal on the planet. Just think about how deeply projectiles and throwing is in our cognition. Just look at our language. When you talk about a project you're working on, project means to send out. Object literally means thrown against. Or saying I'm the subject, which means throw under. We use metaphors like being thrown into a situation. When you want to dispose of something, you throw it out. When you mess something up or make a mistake, you miss the mark. We're always using metaphors about throwing in our language. This is because throwing with accuracy is an extraordinarily complex task that we've been concerned with for millions of years. Okay, so how does all this relate to video games? Well, consider for a second. What's the most popular genre of video games? It's shooter games. Call of Duty, Fortnite, Overwatch, CSGO, GTA V. All of these games involve the basic fundamental pattern of launching projectiles towards targets. This is a capacity that is extraordinarily deep within our cognition, and that's part of why these games are so profoundly compelling to us. So you know when you were in school, learning the Pythagorean theorem or something, and then you had that moment where it finally clicked and you saw the important pattern involved in the particular material you're learning. This is a relevance realization, a profound shift in what you find relevant in a particular situation or problem. Dental plan. Lisa needs braces. 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 And this cognitive mechanism is deeply crucial for our intelligence. In particular, it allows us to deal with combinatorial explosions. Consider the game of chess. After each player has moved a piece five times, there are this many possible board configurations in chess. It is literally impossible for us to cognitively simulate this many possibilities. So how do we even play chess? Well, we learn how to attend to the relevant aspects of the game, like control over the center board, the vulnerability of the king, the relative value of the pieces, and those sorts of things. We can use this information to arrive at strategies and tactics which inform how we can proceed. And the more we play chess, the better we get at identifying relevant aspects of the current game state, which consequently improve our play. Video games involve a constant cascade of these relevance realizations. Think about League of Legends, which is an even more significant combinatorial explosion than chess due to the much larger pool of possible game states. Many key skills in League of Legends, like CSing, trading, ganking, and those sorts of things, cannot be learned by memorizing action flowcharts of precisely what to do in a given situation. There are just way too many possible situations you can find yourself in. Instead, learning these skills is a kind of implicit learning, where over time, you develop a nonverbal sense of what to do based on your current game state. This process of implicit learning is so valuable for many facets of life, like playing an instrument, driving a car, and even walking. Just try to explain to me how exactly it is you walk. It's an extraordinarily complex physical process involving balance, coordination, muscular action, and so on. But yet, we know how to do it effortlessly. So video games are effectively allowing us to practice implicit learning and relevance realizations in a controlled, simulated environment. Okay, so I've just outlined why video games are so damn compelling and addictive to us. So why is this bad? Well, video games are not real. 
Video games are effectively hijacking our evolutionarily adaptive cognitive structures, like the inclination towards flow states and projectiles, like I mentioned. However, we accomplish absolutely nothing in the real world. And this is not the case for certain situations like Twitch live streamers, where playing video games for eight hours a day does result in the realization of real life goals. But for most of us, playing video games for eight hours a day achieves nothing for us outside of the game world. There are some good parts though. Video games are not all bad. They're definitely better for your brain than passively watching Netflix for hours on end. And this is because video games require active participation. These games generate a problem structure with a path towards some goal or solution state, and you must actively carry out actions in order to move towards this goal state. And this allows you to practice core cognitive skills, such as problem solving, reaction time, and crucially, your capacity to enter the flow state. I also haven't even mentioned the social aspect of video games. Playing video games with your friends allows you to enhance your communication skills, and importantly, it allows you to connect with your friends in a deeper way. Watching a movie with a group of friends is obviously a connecting experience, we've all done it, because you're all experiencing and attending to the same thing which allows you to enter a participatory knowing relation with your friends. And video games also accomplish this, but further enhance it by incorporating the aspect of active participation. You're striving towards a common goal together or competing with one another in friendly competition. Playing a game with people allows you to communicate with one another in a profound nonverbal way. I think Super Smash Brothers is an excellent example of this. This game involves complex mind games, which are continuously unfolding and shifting as the match continues, in such a way that it is too fast for language to encapsulate everything that's happening. And this generates a profound participatory relation, where both players are effectively communicating with each other in a complex dance of outplays, baits, and action prediction. the golden mean, the middle way. I think you already know what I'm about to tell you. Video games are a good, fun, engaging way of passing the time, and they're probably more useful to you than watching some meaningless show on Netflix. But at the same time, they're extremely addictive, and your actions within games are ultimately useless to you in the real world. So you probably shouldn't play video games for eight hours a day. But playing for a couple hours in the evenings to unwind is probably genuinely good for your mind. It's all about that balance, man. I'd recommend trying to kindle that flow state experience with other activities in addition to video games, like playing music, doing martial arts, playing sports, computer programming, or whatever it is you're inclined to do. I hope this video has broadened your understanding of why we play video games and the cognitive utility video games might have for us. This is the first proper video I've made on this channel, so let me know what you think. Any feedback or suggestions in the comments would definitely be appreciated. If you're interested in more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And feel free to give the like button the old click to help me with the algorithm. Or share this video to anyone you think might find it useful or interesting. Thanks for watching.